Oh no! You gotta be kidding me! We've got a straight flush against a nut flush. Get ready for some electrifying battles on the felt. We're diving into the rare moments when two or more players flop monster hands, turning ordinary games into massive showdowns. Who will come out on top when neither player is willing to back down and both believe they're holding the winning cards? Buckle up because you're about to see some of the most intense poker action unfold, where fortunes are made or shattered. The luck of the draw. In our first hand, Jason Kuhn with over 56 million in poker earnings faces off against Makita Badziowski, who boasts an equally impressive $50 million in tournament winnings. But here's the twist. Neither player holds even a pair. It's a nerve-wracking moment as two of the top earners in poker history gamble everything on their outs, each hoping to hit their miracle cards. Let's see how this wild showdown unfolds. 410. Yeah. So Nikita Bate Kalski with A7 suited opens under the gun. Jason Kuhn going at him with A6 of diamonds. <laughs> Tchaikovsky makes the call. Well, wow, Tchaikovsky calling with A7 suited. Seems to know where Jason Kuhn is at. This is definitely not an easy call. Wow. Ooh. Oh, God, what an action board. All right, so Jason Kuhn flops an open end a straight draw. Tchaikovsky flops a straight draw. And flush draw. Even the commentator had to take a breather to break down what's happening on this flop. Kuhn and Makita have both incredibly strong draws, but in classic poker fashion, neither of them has completed a hand yet. This is the kind of moment where poker becomes a battle of pure unbridled aggression, with both players holding massive potential. 230,000. I wonder if Bate Kalski wants to consider making an aggressive play here. He's got a lot of equity, a lot of outs. Can easily get a better hand to fold like Ace King or Ace Queen if he was to make a raise. He does have position. Let's see what develops. He would be a favorite against them like Kings or Queens. Yeah, slightly. All in. I like the play. He's trying to get hands like Ace King to fold. Kuhn in another tough spot. Yeah, scoping out to see how hard he wants to gamble for this. Jason Kuhn here. Gonna make the wow. call. Oh, he's in terrible wow. It all boils down to the final cards. Both Kuhn and Makita are desperate to hit their draws and claim this enormous pot. But only one of them can walk away victorious. Trust me, both players are laser focused on that pile of chips. Club though. Jeez, that's it, Kowski got his chips in again. Turn card is a queen. One more card to go for Jason Kuhn. Holy shit, your seven's live to play. How's that yeah. possible? You're alive to play. Yeah. Comes a river uh, card. The card's a wow. five. That's it. Jason Kuhn eliminated from the tournament in fifth place. A7 high holds. A7 high beats A6 high. Neither Jason Kuhn nor Makita Badzuowski improves to even a pair. And it's Badzuowski who wins with A7 high, claiming a massive pot. It's a reminder that in poker, sometimes you have to go all in with nothing but a draw, especially when you're dealing with high stakes pros like these two. Despite the tension and swings, only one of them could win. And this time it was Makita who walked away with the victory.
Ciao for now. In this intense hand at the final table of a $64,000 buy-in tournament, tensions are high as Chow and Kenny clash. Both players hit big on the flop, but the decisions ahead are anything but straightforward. With the massive tournament payout looming and their tournament lives on the line, every move counts. The stakes are high and the pressure is suffocating. One player will walk away with a huge chip stack while the other's tournament dreams will be over. Three options, actually. It's a tough spot. So he's gonna make the call. Oh. Wow. So bring Kenny flops top pair with the ten of spades. Chow with top two pair. Kenny only doesn't have that much chips behind in a bloated pot. It's gonna be hard for him to get away from this. This is a really good flop for Kenny because yeah. he's he's likely gonna discount ace queen and ace king from his opponent's uh, range. So Kenny gonna play a little bit passive here. He's not really excited to get all the chips in, you know. Mm -hmm. Chow needs to bet this flop. There's three spades on the board. Oh my god, he's gonna get a big. So I, he's gonna bet. Chow is going on the offensive. Firing out a big bet, and with good reason. He knows he has to protect himself against exactly the kind of hand that Kenny is sitting on. A dangerous flush draw. It's no easy task, especially with the pressure of being at the final table, where every decision could be the difference between winning or busting. If a hand like bring Kenny's, he could have the best hand. Yeah. Yeah, he's just gonna shove all yeah, in. he's gonna go all in. Oh my god, and a huge spot developing here. All in a call. Kenny needs a spade badly. 37% chance. Wow. We're three spots off a 250k bubble. Chow got it in good. Oh man, here comes a turn card. It's a three. Kenny at risk, needs a spade. Four. It's not gonna do it. Bryn Kenny eliminated in seventh place. I mean, he made an aggressive play pre-flop. His opponent correctly called. Did not fold the ace jack. Flop two pair. Chow claims the pot, and with it a clear path toward the grand prize. While Kenny's hopes for the tournament are dashed. Despite flopping a strong hand, Kenny's luck runs dry, and he finds himself eliminated from the final table. It's a heartbreaking finish for a high-stakes player, but as always in poker, it only takes one hand to turn everything around, or in this case, to bring it all crashing down. Enjoying the video so far? To stay up to date with the most epic poker fights, sickest suckouts, and latest controversies, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Poker Charity Tournament. Our next clip features a clash of poker titans as poker pro Andrew Robel squares off against Bill Perkins, the savvy businessman with a staggering net worth of $110 million. Robel, known for his years of poker prowess, goes head to head with Perkins in this charitable event where the pot doesn't just grow, it explodes. Both players catch monster flops, setting the stage for a massive confrontation. The only question is, will the poker pro reign supreme, or will the millionaire businessman prove he can handle the heat? In the crypto streets. He's got his hands in a lot of different pies. Folded around to Perkins oh. in the big, who defends. Am I gonna get another pebble? I would like to win this one. I would like my pebble back, sir. <laughs> well, forget the pebbles. Let's play for chips. What a flop. Two jacks, two hearts, nut flush draw against trips. There will be blood. Problem for Perky here. The nut flush draw. Robles gotta love this situation. Three jacks with an ace kicker. Looking to extract some value. Small bet, 35,000. Perky's not going to waste a lot of time making this call. Perkins is here to gamble. He doesn't even bat an eye and calls with his ace-high flush draw. No matter how strong Robles holding is, seeing Perkins make that snap call like it's nothing is enough to unsettle anyone. And there you go. 
Six of hearts on the turn, giving Perkins the nut flush and for the time being the lead. As he checks a second time over to Robel. I mean, if you're Robel, obviously a flush is, is a concern when Perkins calls the flop, but he also could have a hand like ace four or a, a jack with a worse kicker. Some small pocket pairs maybe in there. 100,000 bet now. Question is, for Perkins, the board is paired, so you don't have the nuts. You have the nut flush. Um, you Do you want to play a huge pot out of position or slow play? It looks like he's electing to slow play. Just calls the 100K and checks a third time. So at this point, you would imagine Robles going to look to extract some more value again, not really be, fear being check raised on the river. Both players have powerful hands in front of them, and while Andrew Robel thinks he's in control, Perkins has laid out a subtle trap. The question is, will Robel manage to find an escape route, or is he about to fall right into Perkins' plan? Although now he also loses to Jack Queen. If Perkins were to have that, relatively small bet. Oh, look at this. Perkins doesn't like it. Shaking his head like, woe is me. But he makes the call. He's going to get the good oh, news. Plus. Phew. Look at it. Perky's running hot. Perky is on fire. I don't think Robel anticipated being called by a better hand based on Perkins' theatrics there, but Bill was concerned about being beaten. Bill Perkins emerges victorious, taking down the monster pot in amazing fashion. Against all odds, the businessman beats the seasoned pro, showing that sometimes in poker, it's not just about experience, it's about seizing the moment. Bill Perkins' win adds another thrilling chapter to his already colorful poker journey. Dwan of the Dead. In this next clip, we have Tom Dwan going up against Danny Tang in a high stakes poker short deck, no limit hold'em cash game. For those unfamiliar with short deck poker, it's a fast paced variation where the twos, threes, fours, and fives are removed from the deck, cranking up the action. This game differs in some key ways from traditional no limit hold'em. Sets become easier to hit due to the reduced number of cards. And in this format, a flush actually beats a full house because with only nine cards of any suit, hitting a flush is much tougher. With a flush draw on the flop, you've got just five outs. Short deck poker really turns up the heat and changes everything. The stakes are enormous, and this flop is about to ignite the action. For 50, that's fine. The employees from the casino are yeah. doing it, so they are here anyway. It doesn't cost... Oh, it doesn't cost money, you mean? Yeah. But if you have to pay doubling the dealer, the dealer's dealing, paying $50 an hour, and then somebody $50 <coughs> an hour. To oh, yeah, it's 50, yeah. <coughs> then we'd rather get RFID chips. Yeah. Right. Long run is probably easier, but I don't know how that Long run is easier, less mistakes. Less mistakes? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think it's But so you need useful. to have the whole so cable. Useful, why, why? How does the scanner work? No, because now I, I saw one of the, uh, the companies. Yeah. So they put it under the felt. The yeah. box where you can same thing. You put the chips and you put and you put the cards. Same thing. Mm. You can scan the chips too. Just like at uh, a lot of casinos. Juan and Danny are pulled into an intense moment where the flop has delivered both players' hands that are borderline impossible to fold. Even though the current pot is sitting at 19,000 euros, it feels like we're sitting on the edge of an explosive poker moment. It's like watching a fuse slowly burn toward an inevitable explosion. It was like when, remember when the poker, when, when the poker game, uh, a rack a of, chips, of chips, they put a rack yeah, of, a lot of chips. Yeah. Because it's a rack, but if you put it like this, it should make mistakes. There's a lot of cage have used this. So make sure a reference for the, uh, is that even for the cashier, so is it's it easier. Cheap? Not very expensive. The chips are more expensive because they do have a sensor. But you need to install it on the table everywhere you go. Yeah. On. All right. Straight versus straight. Not straight. Tom's got trouble. diamond draw he could hit too. No trouble. Wow. No trouble. Jack six. Whoa. Quite a nasty hand. Mm. 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 -hmm. 119,000 euro in the middle. Tom's got 25% chance. Does not hit. He's out of chips. 
He, he's going to top up 100k. Despite Dwan's aggressive play and numerous outs with his flush and straight draws, luck isn't on his side this time. When the river is dealt, it's a blank, and Dwan's missed draw leaves him empty-handed. Tang scoops the hefty pot, showing us even the most skilled players can't dodge the variants of short deck poker. And this hand is proof that even when the odds look in your favor, the cards always determine the poker story. Who's got the nuts? Get ready for a wild showdown as we dive back into the action with another fast-paced short deck game. This time Elton and Rue find themselves locked in a high-stakes battle, where both players catch insanely strong flops. With neither willing to back down, it's a high-speed collision with massive stacks on the line. The tension is through the roof, and the player's gamble is in full gear. No, you should just shove. Uh, Turn, you should just shove. Well, River, no. what can I do? No. Yeah. River be tilting. <laughs> no, not this guy. No, but if if it's chop pot, does Jack Six still get the bonus? Yeah. 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 Half, 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 half. Half. Whoa, yeah. man. That's why he wants it all. That's right why he all in. Yeah, the extra 25 get. Deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Jack Six. Uh, Hey, you don't have that many two pads. You only have six, seven, and just seven now, you know? We got some sex. Deep sex now. Elton, inside straight draw. And a flush draw. Rookout top set raises. All in for Elton saying, and these guys. Nobody. We got the deep sex. 350,000 euro in the middle. Pretty close. With a massive pot brewing, Elton faces an uphill battle with only nine outs to take it down. He'll need divine intervention from the poker gods to hit one of those few cards and clinch the pot. As things stand, his chances aren't great, and the pressure couldn't be higher. Raquel, a slight favorite. My hand is very bad for your hand. That's okay. My nine? <laughs> nine, 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 nine. What's better, jack six or jack six? Hmm? I think Jack six. 50, uh, 40k, 50k more. No. I mean, no, no, no. Not useful. <laughs> they are just running at once. P P wow. Mm. wow, Rui. I blocked Jack six. And Rui Cal's got half a million euro. Two, Elton. Three, four. As the dust settles with the final card revealed, Rue scoops up the gigantic pot, leaving Elton to rue his luck. With this bold win, Rue takes the edge in a hand that will be talked about long after the chips have been stacked. Rue's perfectly timed moves and unshakable nerves make this a moment of brilliance in the short deck world. Bill is back. Once again, we dive into the action of the 2019 Triton Million for Charity Tournament, and we're in familiar territory with businessman Bill Perkins leading the charge. Known for mixing it up with the pros, while keeping a cool demeanor, Perkins finds himself in another thrilling showdown. The flop is a beauty, and with both players hitting solid hands, neither one is going to fold this deep into the tournament. While the stakes are monumental, let's not forget, it's all for a charitable cause. Then, as they progress, those that have tournament experience and understand how to play stacks between 20 and 30 big blinds uh, increase their advantage over some of the cash game players who may not be as well versed in uh, tournament poker. Ace Jack suited and a couple of sixes come along. Bottom set here for Perky as the run good continues for him, but a massive draw for Rajkumar. Open ended straight flush draw. Yeah, run good for now for Perky, but uh, this is a close one here. There's a lot of cards that Vivek can catch to win this pot still. Open ended straight flush draw to boot. 55K from Perky with two checks in front of him. So now if you're Vivek, this is a hand that you can absolutely feel comfortable just getting all your chips in. The question is, is that the way you want to approach it or do you want to slow play? He elects to go for it with the raise, putting the pressure back on Bill Perkins, who he's committed here with a set. He's not Bill Perkins isn't the type to back down when he's sitting on a set. He didn't build a fortune of 110 million without taking some risks. And his opponents better buckle up and hope for some serious luck to avoid catastrophe. 
However, it's not as clear cut for Perkins as it may seem. Holding the fourth best hand possible on this board does leave some room for doubt. He's got some thinking to do. Not gonna fold here. Question is, is he gonna raise? He is dedicating a little bit of thought to what type of holding Raj Kumar would raise under the gun with and then check raise this flop with. Oh, he's not screwing around here. He's gonna re-raise right now. Big three bet. Now, if you're Vivek, you're sitting in Vivek's seat, you think, wow, look at the stack sizes. If I'm putting in this much, might as well put in the rest, because I'm really not going to fold the turn, am I? Only 9.15 left behind for Perky. Yeah, this is a weird spot for Vivek, because you don't really have much fold equity. Maybe Perky's goofing around in folds, but it's very unlikely. Well, Vivek decides to just call, and that card doesn't help him nor change the texture. Well, now, I mean, you would imagine Perky's going to just put the rest in and put Vivek in a spot where in. he's getting a price now Indeed. to draw. In its sales. Just got, now it's just all about math. You see him looking up, thinking, okay, well, 915, what's in the pot? What are my odds of hitting? This is what goes through a poker player's mind in a situation like this. It's very cut and dry. You know you're not a Right on cue, Perkins makes a calculated move, delivering a knockout blow by putting maximum pressure on his opponent. It's a masterful play, forcing them to pay dearly if they want to chase their draw. Perkins knows how to keep his foot on the gas, and this hand is no exception. Head, so you know what you have as far as outs for the most part. The question is, is there value in making a call from a pot odds perspective? Getting two and a half to one, he decides yes, makes the call, and is going to be fishing for a diamond, Ugh, queen, or seven. So well, he's 30% right, to hit it. I wish. <laughs> Here comes the river. Not there, and Perkins will double. Wow, Perky's running hot. Look at Perky. He went from 500K, and now he's all of a sudden up over 3 million in chips. Holy shit. I Neither Bill Perkins nor his opponent had much of a choice given their strong hands. But in the end, it's Bill Perkins' set of sixes that holds up, securing him another impressive win in this high-profile charity tournament. While most of the decisions were fairly straightforward, Perkins once again proves that sometimes skill and a bit of luck can make all the difference. The craziest flop you'll ever see. Our second to last clip features an exciting moment from Hustler Casino Live. The action kicks off between Andy Stacks and Mariano. And what happens next defies all poker logic. The flop is so mind-blowing that it feels almost fictional, like something out of a high-stakes Hollywood blockbuster. These two players, known for clashing in massive pots, have faced off in over half a million dollar pots. But this one, it's a whopping $611,000. And it's set to go down in Hustler Casino history. See a cold four bet? No, he's gonna call though. Mariano is gonna four bet though. Good four. Charles calls. Good four. He's a fed four. Andy may be considering something. Ah, right, good call. He just calls. $27,000 in the pot. Diamonds are cheap. Do we get a potential diamond flop? Oh no! You gotta be kidding me! We've got a straight flush against a nut flush. This might be the most absurd flop you'll ever witness. Adding to the drama, Mariano's cocky persona is in full swing, while Andy, the more laid back competitor, is in for one wild ride. It checked through on the flop. Mariano started this hand with about $300,000. 35. Mariano bets $8,000 and just got raised. Imagine having a straight flush and getting raised. Mariano on the right side of your screen, right there, has flopped the straight flush in a four bet pot. $97,000 in the pot. Board does not pair. It is a fourth diamond out there. The river card spells disaster for Andy. He's now in a position where betting big feels right, given his flush. But we know the sad truth. He's been a sitting duck since the flop. 
120. 120. And Andy just bets $120,000. Mariano moves all in. Andy calls and shows him the ace. Oh my god. Mariano. <laughs> $611,000 pot, and Mariano can't believe it. We've Despite the crushing defeat, Andy Stax remains composed, even as Mariano celebrates a victory. This hand, decided by the sickest of coolers, serves as a harsh reminder of how brutal poker can be. Even when you've got a really strong hand, sometimes you just aren't gonna win. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just a fan of the game, flops like these are why we love the thrill and unpredictability of poker. Straight to the point. In our final clip, we're diving into a chaotic hand featuring three players hitting an unreal flop, pushing the pot to an insane size. When the board comes out this coordinated, players need to proceed with caution because it's the perfect setup for massive hands. Expect the unexpected, as this hand takes a few sharp turns no one saw coming. Jumps in from the small arm with the 8-9, and Webster with 6-7 off in the big blind. Closing the action to take it four way. Five, six, seven, flop. Alexi flopping the straight Webster. The flop is a dream for 8-9. The straight's already made. The action takes off when Joshua bets, despite just having 1% equity. <laughs> the man has made a very loose, very gambling call from the small blind with 8-9 off. He's going to flop the nuts against two pair and another pair. He's going to double up. We can't double up, but he's going well, to he's he's just, win a big pot. It's just flat called here. We know Webster's going to jam. And then what is... I think he might double it, but right? I mean, Joshua's going to jam, right? Joshua's going to... Yeah, I mean, Webster's going to jam here. Webster's going to jam. And he's Joshua's got a call at least. Right. Because he could just be against, like, some sort of draw, some sort of... Yeah, this, this is... be a huge pot. Oh. There is the jam, and... I, I feel like Joshua's just going to jam. We know Alexi is... He's in there so wide. Yeah, you just need to clean it up, don't you, right? You gotta think they're like, yep. It's the all in. Alexi yeah. won't believe. Alexi couldn't ask for a better situation. He's holding the nuts straight, with two players already all in. With the chips already in the middle, he's about to rake in one huge pot. <laughs> Go from Josh, he can, of course, still catch an eight for a chop. Or Happy comes nine, out. seven. Yeah, Webster needs a seven or six. Nine. Nine. Eight. Oh! Now um, was a. Uh, Gonna be a chop. Webster's obviously still looking for a six or seven for the house. Looks like a nine for his everyone chops. Nine for everyone chop. Yeah. That'd be no good. one deserves to win this hand. <laughs> Deuce on the end. Webster taps the table. I'm sure he's not done in this tournament yet, maybe. Just when it seemed like Alexi had it locked up, Joshua finds himself incredibly lucky, hitting the same straight. But while they split the pot, it's Webster who takes the fall, losing everything in this high-stakes poker showdown gone wrong. Thanks for watching, and to stay up to date with the most savage runouts, monster bluffs, and most iconic poker fights, make sure to like and subscribe.